Welcome to the Silver Report Uncut. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to 2020. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the declining wage growth we've had in the U.S., or if anything, wage stagnation, because it is a serious subject. And even though they point to low consumer prices as their, you know, point to their official inflation gauge, they're really, really underestimating the totals that is spent on health insurance in the United States. So that's a different subject entirely. A lot of the times they either point to the fact that we have tons of cheap credit, 0% interest rates, so the debt doesn't matter as long as the consumers keep shopping. But yet we find millions of Americans are surviving on retail work in strip malls and shopping centers all around the United States. They're earning hourly wages and they literally can't make enough, much less obtain financial security or any kind of solid health care. Now we focus on the U.S. Private Sector Job Quality Index. Now a group of researchers have tried to break apart this problem to try to find out why so many American workers are being left behind. Now a group of researchers and economists have compiled the study and they believe they've identified a key part of the problem. Now they said since 1990, the U.S. has been creating an overabundance of low quality service jobs. 63% of the production and non-supervisory jobs that have been created throughout the past 30 years have been in low wage or low hour positions. That's a marked contrast from the start of the 1990s, where almost half of these jobs, 47% were high wage. Now the job quality index, it was developed by economists from Cornell University, the Coalition for a Prosperous America, the University of Missouri, Kansas City, and the Global Institute for Sustainable Prosperity. Now they poured through private sector jobs data, and then they found that throughout the past 30 years, the U.S. economy has become increasingly dependent on jobs that offer fewer hours of work and lower relative wages. In particular, they focus on the almost 15 million non-management jobs in leisure and hospitality. They offer an average of 24.6 hours of work a week at $14.65 an hour. That's $360 a week. Now there's also the 13.5 million retail jobs that offer an average of 30.3 hours per week at $16.73 an hour. That comes out to $506 weekly, and keep in mind that is the average. The study also found there's currently around 105 million production and non-supervisory jobs in the U.S. That's 83% of all private sector jobs, and more than half of them, or 58 million, pay less than the average weekly U.S. wage of $793. Many of these jobs, they also don't offer health care or other benefits. And these are the best jobs that many Americans can find for the time being, as we see automation is slowly slowly breaking down the entire brick and mortar retail sector. Now the job quality index, they seem to have concluded that this low wage work has one benefit. It's been the stagnant price inflation. So they say that consumer prices have been flat because household earnings, they haven't been growing. And with more Americans earning low wages while working less than 30 hours a week, income levels have actually fallen. And yet they point to these studies that show us how the net worth of American citizens have increased and they're neglecting the fact that all of this increase has been right at the top income levels. Also, it's reduced overall purchasing power for the common man and it's only getting worse. Since 1999, low wage employment, it's actually shrunk by an average of one hour per week. Another trend we've seen is that executive level pay, it has been rising. Since the Great Recession, inflation-adjusted income growth for the higher-tier jobs, it's climbed away from the average worker's earnings. And it's also driven this misleading impression of the overall job market. Now, from 2000 to 2010, according to the study, the U.S. lost more than 5 million manufacturing jobs. And this was a huge chunk of the nation's middle-class workforce. That means millions of Americans have fallen down the wage scale. And even though the total U.S. workforce it keeps expanding, those high-paid jobs have simply been replaced with lower-wage work at reduced weekly hours. Now, the study said what is most noteworthy is that technology change isn't the dominant factor in such job loss. 
Otherwise, Americans would see similar declines in transportation and warehouse work. So they pointed to the fact to justify this that Amazon has a highly automated warehouse system and yet they continue to expand employment. But of course, they're also expanding some of the services they offer. So all of that employment might not be going to the warehouses. Nevertheless, what has really hurt America's workforce has been this trade policy that has allowed subsidized imports to displace vital industries in the U.S., critical industries. And also, due to this declining level of production, there's been a failure to maintain the domestic infrastructure. This also has deprived the economy of other manufacturing and construction opportunities. And where manufacturing once provided skilled, good-paying work, including benefits and health care for Americans that might not have even had a college education, Americans now that lack a college degree are finding themselves progressively more underemployed. Around two-thirds of America's workforce, or 65.1%, does not have a college degree. So 100 million Americans are watching their employment prospects literally deteriorate disappear. There's no way to easily fix this, but ultimately manufacturing needs to be restored. This can spur middle class job growth. In any effort to revitalize manufacturing, it needs to be more than just some of the trade policies. They also need to address the overvalued US dollar, as they've already been in discussion about. And unless we find a way to solve this problem and get back to producing things as Americans, there is simply no answer to this job crisis. The quality of jobs will continue to deteriorate, and it seems as if we're at the level now in which we could be seeing a major shakeup going on in the retail sector. This would mean all of those jobs that have been adding throughout the past 20 years, they all could be coming up on the block. And the truth is, most American families, they're struggling. But you hardly ever hear about this because they keep putting out these figures that are not representative of the mass of the people. Now around 10% of all American workers, they're making $100,000 or more a year. as 10%. But most of those high paying jobs are concentrated in a few major cities along the east and west coast. For most of the rest of the country, the actual inflation, the actual cost of living is soaring while paychecks are not. And according to the Social Security Administration, the median income in the U.S. last year was just $32,838. That means 50% of American workers made less than that. And even if you rounded that number up to $33,000, if you break it down on a monthly basis, it's just $2,750 a month. That's certainly not a number that would support a middle class lifestyle for a family of four before taxes. Still. In most families, more than one person is working these days. In fact, in many families, more than one person is working multiple jobs. And this just shows that the struggle is very real. And honestly, if you make less than $100,000 a year, don't feel too bad. Only around 10% of all Americans actually make that much money. Now here's an even more stunning look at the numbers. We see 33%, one third of all American workers. They made less than $20,000 last year. 33%. 46% of American workers made less than $30,000 last year. 58% of all American workers made less than $40,000. And 67% of all American workers are making less than $50,000. This is the easiest explanation as to why we constantly are seeing these headlines talking about how great the economy is doing, how the numbers have never been better. And we continue to see survey after survey that are showing that most Americans are still living paycheck to paycheck. And after paying their bills, there is no margin of error. Now we look at a new report from UBS. It shows that increasing number of Americans even paying their bills is becoming a serious difficulty. Now they showed 44% of all U.S. consumers don't make enough money to cover their expenses. Now they said, quote, low income consumers are struggling to make ends meet despite the greatest economy ever. And if a recession strikes or the employment cycle continues to decelerate, this could mean the average American with insurmountable debts will likely fall behind on their debt servicing payments. And as the analyst from UBS, Matthew Mish, added, 44% of consumers don't even make enough money to cover their expenses. That means that half of this country is broke 
and struggling just to survive financially. And with the media constantly talking about all of these great jobs that are out there and available and abundant and just this lack of people to be able to fill those positions, let's just face it, most jobs in the U.S., according to the data, are not good jobs. The poverty level for a household of four in the U.S. is $25,750. More than 40% of the workers in this country are making less than that each year, and that's for a household of four. All right, thank you guys for stopping by and joining us here at the Silver Report Uncut. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe, like the videos, share the videos, get the word out. As always, stay safe.